Happy Halloween! Welcome to a spooky edition of Cooking with Heather. Today we're going to make something very spooky, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Just first, I'd like to give a little shout out to a little fan of mine named Sadie, whose mom contacted me on Instagram and thanked me for making such beautiful episodes, and she asked that I give her kid a shout out. So here it is. Hi Sadie! Thank you for liking my show! Anyway, let's get to it. We've got a recipe right here. And I keep recipes on my phone. It's on my phone and we're going to get to it. We need three-fourths cup of all-purpose flour. And you know, you may wonder, why am I dressed in black? Well, you see, I this year's costume was a Death Theater, and you know, Death Theaters even Death Eaters spend time at home. And so this is a Death Eater at home because Death Eaters only don their super amazing robes and masks to go out and deal with people. I'm not doing that right now. I'm at home. So hence the simple black robe. Anyway, three, four cups, three quarter cups of flour. I just need to find it. I can't seem to find it, so I just have to do some simple math. get my three quarters cups of flour. Stick that in the sink in case we don't need that again. Or in case we do need it again. Right. And recipes are always fun. We just need to clean this up as we work because of this is going to be a very messy thing to do. And you know, I don't have a lot of counter space. So it's important to clean with the clean whenever we get counter space and wash our hands as quickly as we work. Because my kitchen's small, it's literally a shoebox. So, all right. One cup, oh no, half a cup of sugar. Let's find this. All my recipe cups fell apart on me, and that's very annoying. So the half cup is in the sink. We gotta wash her really quick. Dry her really quick. A lot of sugar for Halloween, but you know, since COVID, they 
This is a lot of sugar right here, but you know, since COVID, trick-or-treating in that hasn't been the same, so it's never a bad thing to look up little recipes and have a little fun with baking at home. It really isn't. I'm just going to undo that because it's hurting my neck. Okay, so... tablespoon of whole milk. I don't have whole milk because guess what? I have an allergy to cow's milk. I'm lactose intolerant so I got soy milk. I'm just going to hold it over the bowl. There's a tablespoon right there. We're just going to add that. Put this in the sink. Put this in the fridge because we don't need it anymore. Wipe the milk off my phone, okay. Okay. One third cup of unsalted butter. That is in the fridge. That is in the fridge. One third cup. Here we go. One third cup. And you know what to help with this? We're actually going to get a spoon. And a knife. We're going to do this quickly. We're just going to do this really quickly. There we go. And we're going to scrape this out into the bowl. Scrape it nice. There we go. Put everything away when we don't need it. Because I got baking butter and margarine. And I've got margarine that I use for eating. And we got to wash our hands again. Put the knife aside since we don't need it. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Pure vanilla extract. That's a teaspoon. See, this is our pretty teaspoon. Try and guess what we're making while we make it. Okay? It'll be fun activity for you. There we go. And since this has been open, it has to be refrigerated now. <clears throat> there's space in my fridge. Okay, now we just mix it all together with a spoon. I was going to use a mixer, but those are so messy. You know? I'm going to mix it all together with a spoon. And a dash of salt. We're going to get a dash of salt. A dash. of salt.
I'm not going to use the electric, electric mixer today just because I don't want to. You know, it's a little dry, so we can add a little bit of more milk. And that's perfectly all right, but not too much. Maybe about the size of this lid. We just need to moisturize the mixture a bit. There, that makes all the difference. my aprons getting untied. And we'll even add like half a tablespoon of water as well, just to help. need to get my hands in here and flip it around because it's just the spoon's not doing its job and I need to do the job of the spoon and you know that's okay if the spoon doesn't do its job you can get in and do the job of the spoon and just mat it and press it and you may need to get your hands wet And that's perfectly okay. It may help the mixture. There we go. Cookie dough is coming together. Cookie dough is coming together. Cookie dough is coming together. There we go. Yes. And you're asking me why I'm not adding any chocolate chips to this? Well, you'll see, won't you? But, we really do need to let it set and cool, don't we? Right.
We need to chew in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. So I'll see you in 30 minutes, okay? All right, welcome back. I've gotten the dough out of the fridge and I've actually rolled it flat, like really flat. Like you can see thin flat. I rolled it really flat. And no, it doesn't have any chocolate chips on it. And that's the way I want it. I just want it flat. It, it'll be crackly. But what we're going to do now is this. I'm going to press. each of our fingers. I'm going to do it hard. Into the dough. and gently lift it out. You see, so we have a handprint. Do you see this handprint? Well, it's not a perfect handprint, but do you see the handprint? Okay. This is something I've actually never done before. Oh. Okay, so... Now... We're going to open the candies that I've got here. The candy balls and the glossettes. This is a cute ah. We're going to place the glossettes in the fingers. going to place them ever so carefully, ever so carefully in the fingers and we're going to press down so they stay there. They have to be close together. We only have enough cookie dough for one hand, but that's okay. We can do this with two hands later. See, look at this. Look at this absolutely interesting project that I've got right here. This is a craft that you can do with your kids because you know, trick-or-treating might be just out of the question for various reasons. Maybe such a small gloss set. Might want to use bigger gloss sets, longer gloss sets, thicker gloss sets for these bigger fingers. Here we go. Yeah, like trick-or-treating, you know, COVID has made that really, really hard. 
and COVID's coming back. I don't care what people say, COVID's coming back. And it's not gone by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, that looks about even. Just remember to press down so the fingers will stay in place. Press down, press down, press down, press down. You don't want those fingers moving. Like there should, if you press your hand down hard enough, there should be grooves in the dough. For the fingers. And now we're going to rinse our hand because those little gloss sets are sticky gonna put something else. We're gonna put these chocolate balls. I suppose it doesn't matter what you use, but we can use the black wrapped ones. You have to unwrap them. This is the annoying part. You have to unwrap all of these. It can be tedious. can be very tedious. But you know, it creates such a cool effect. But these are the knuckles. a lovely little craft. And of course you should want to press down. And you know, the fun thing with gloss set raisins is they're all the same, they're all different sizes. There you go. Anyway, the knuckles. It's a bit of a hand mosaic. See, look at how cool this is. This hand is slowly coming together. Okay. Need more skinny raisins to kind of
build the form of the hand like around just very skinny raisins very very skinny raisins I mean you might have to pick through raisins and you can eat the ones you don't use but we want skinny raisins for this one for this little piece of it very very skinny ones and yes there are skinny gloss sets of a chunky gloss set. There you go. Very skinny uniform gloss sets. Because then we're just going to we go we're just going to form the skeleton of the hand it's not going to be perfect and you should press down to make sure they stay in place See, look at that. Look at that cool little hand. Add a gloss set to make the pinky better, the bigger. You know that's a thumb so that's really cool and now we're gonna fill it with some chippets semi-sweet chips We've only got about nine grams of sugar, so these are definitely semi-sweet. If you're looking for low sugar Halloween treats, these are the ones to go to. That looks kind of like a, a line in the hand and
a lifeline. And there we go. That's the hand. That, this is a spooky hand. This is the spooky hand. A cookie dough hand. Now, shall I bake it to see what it becomes? Hello. I'm back. And so was our spooky cookie dough chocolate hand. Our chocolate cookie dough hand. Shall we have a look at it? All right. Doesn't it look fantastic? It was baked at 320. Now, excuse me, yes, 320 for about 10 minutes. Did you hear that everyone? 320 for 10 minutes. And I only used my left hand because the left hand is close to the heart. And I'm passionate about cooking and plus I didn't have enough dough for both hands. But you can use both hands. Because this is a creative project that all families can do, all kids can do and since trick-or-treating it's just been difficult the last few years due to COVID. Why not bring Halloween home? As a closing note to this episode of Cooking with Heather, just remember, be safe this Halloween, be mindful this Halloween, that 
even though that Halloween, even though Halloween's about fun, be safe, be mindful, be cautious, and most of all, don't be careless. And I've also got a friend who's got a birthday today, and his birthday present is a shout out from me. Happy birthday, Eric. Anyway, this has been a lovely episode of Cooking with Heather, and I'm so pleased that it turned out so well. If you double the recipe, you'll probably have enough for both hands, but I just did it this way just to show you what a lovely thing this can be. A cookie dough hand. A chocolate cookie dough hand using my real hand to make a chocolate hand with a cookie dough background. Isn't that amazing? Simple craft. Look at how amazing it turned out. And it's family friendly. Anyway, this has been another spooky episode of Cooking with Heather. Have a spooky day and a safe and happy Halloween. I love you all. Now closing this episode, let's get another view of this lovely hand. This lovely edible hand. Isn't that amazing? Never has there been such a perfect hand in the days right before Halloween.